Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today we're going to be making a thank you card with my last Rubbernecker big background stamp, and I'm going to show you some cards that some of my viewers sent me, so let's get started. Well, this is the background stamp we're going to use, and it's called Daisies. Love it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to do it. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you these two cards. This one is from, from my friend Debbie, and she this made me feel really bad. She said, this was one of the first cards she ever made. Debbie, this, this is one of the first cards you ever made. You probably uh, were a natural, because look at this thing. Look at the folds in this paper and how beautifully that was cut and I don't know that's just amazing to me nice job Debbie I love it and then look at her stamp on the back hey made this for you isn't that adorable and then this one I love llama tell you it just says happy Valentine's Day and has another llama look how cute that is and this is from she calls herself uh, inky nerd art her name is Meg. Love that, Meg. You did such a nice job. I love this die that you used here. I think it's called a wonky stitch die, but it's just beautiful. And the heart in the center, so cute. I love these llamas. In fact, I have some llamas I should stamp out. But um, Debbie, thank you so much. Love that this was one of your first cards. You are truly talented. So let me grab my background paper and we'll get going with this. I'm going to use a cream colored cardstock for it. And this is four and a half by five and no, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm looking for my bone folder, which I never can find. So, as usual, I'll be using a faux bone folder, which is this. Other people are serious about bone folders. I lose my bone folder more than I have it, so therein lies my problem. I have a sentiment, well I had a stamp set that I really like the sentiment that says you are amazingly amazing, and then on the inside I wanted to put thank you. Let me tell you the story about why I'm sending this card. My cousin sent me a note and said, she hoped that I would get a note from um, a rescue center because she had sent a donation in our dog Aggie's name to them and wanted us to know in case we got this notification. And I thought it was such a wonderful gesture on her part to think of us and to think of our Aggie and to um, to make such a nice donation and I wanted to send her a note thanking her because it was so absolutely special of her. So I want to put this, um, you are amazingly amazing, on a die cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of my dies. So I'm going to just get a piece of scrap paper of the same, the same kind, or the same color at least. Stamp it. I think I'm just going to use some black ink and I'm going to use some Onyx, VersaFine Onyx black ink. And I'm also going to use clear embossing powder because I want it to stand out. I could use um, some of the golds or some of the purples on this, but I think I'm just going to put it on some regular background. Okay. And I already ran my embossing tool over it so that I didn't get any uh, spare embossing powder all over it. <coughs> if you haven't seen this, this is my Ziploc container that I keep my clear embossing powder in. I use clear embossing powder more than anything and I create all my almost all my colors of embossing powder with it. That's why I use it so much because it's easier to do that than to buy every kind of embossing powder under the sun, every color I mean. I'm going to heat up my heat tool and if you pick up your paper it um, will turn it faster because the heat is able to go through the paper. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it does make it easier to do that. Before I put this away though, I do want to stamp the inside of my card with thank you. I'm sure you already know this, but I like to stamp my sentiments several times because I don't like them to be light. 
and if you um, only stamp black ink once sometimes it's just splotchy or too light and I like to make sure that mine are nice and dark and you can really read the sentiment so we've got that much done we can take that out and then we can go die cut the front sentiment so here's what I was explaining about when you put your die on you want to have a little bit of washi tape put your washi tape to the outside where you're not going to be um, your, your um, cut your cut is not going to be on the outside so I want to did that make sense hold on let me tape this down and then I'll explain it better because you're cutting inside the die if you put your tape on the outside if it tears it won't make a difference but if you put the tape on the inside and somehow your paper attaches to it and it gets torn then you end up with torn paper so this is a way to avoid that I decided I was going to use this peg stamp called open chamomile it looks like a daisy to me I'm gonna practice stamping it just to make sure that I don't get any edges because I didn't trim this and I didn't think I would but you never know and I'm only gonna stamp I'm holding it there just to make sure that I get the ink to transfer I think I'm only gonna stamp it maybe three times once maybe down at the bottom at the point and I'm turning it every time I do this just to make sure that I get a really good impression and then I'm going to do the same thing with my embossing powder I'm going to emboss this nice If you do transfer your embossing powders to a container, make sure it's got a good seal on it because it can go bad if you don't. And you don't want that to happen after you bought it, right? Okay, I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to use a paintbrush and I'm just going to hold it down with the paintbrush. I'm going to use my metallics again, only this time. I'm going to take a teeny tiny paintbrush. I was going to do the smushing technique, but I don't have that much control and I don't want to make a big mess with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of clear acetate. You can see that, hopefully. There. Now you should be able to see it. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drop it on to my flower. Okay, so let's set that off to the side. I'm going to use my Misty to stamp this big background and I don't normally do that because it is difficult to do but I'm going to do it anyway and what I did was I put down a little donut of washi tape and I'm going to line up my paper so it's on the second grid line up and the second grid line in and then I'm going to push it on there and the reason I'm doing that is I want to make sure that my image stays or my card base stays in place and that is a five and a half by four and a quarter inch piece of cardstock and it's recollections 110 pound 110 pound um, cream colored cardstock and I'm going to take my great big background stamp hopefully and you want to make sure it's well adhered. I had a little black ink on it so it might transfer and it a little bit did. Not a big deal. I'm not going to make you sit here while I ink this whole thing because it's going to take me a, a minute or so to do it. Okay. That's pretty good but I want it to be darker so I'm going to ink it again. Great it moved it how lucky is that 
It doesn't look bad though. It's kind of cool looking. You think we should leave it like that? Hmm, I think I will. And I'm just going to take it off the background and get my embossing powder. And we'll... It looks more 3D now that it's off stamp, stamp sideways, whatever you call this. I'm just going to put a little bit over each section at a time. And I'm going to turn on my heat tool, warm it up. It already looks really good to me, anyway. I've been talking to some of my viewers that um, have issues with their hands shaking, and I've been trying to think of techniques that will work for them when it comes to ha hands that shake, and ways that they can continue to craft and still, um, still have projects that look nice when they're done. And so what I was thinking is that we would give this a try with the technique that I've been thinking about. And um, the first step to this is I'm going to tape this down on the back like I did before with a little bit of washi tape. This is just your basic uh, Dollar Tree washi. And so I'm just going to make a donut. For those of you who maybe are from outside the U.S. and don't know what a donut is, that's what a donut is. You make it uh, a tape in the shape of a circle, and we call that a donut. I've been finding out lately that I use terms that don't translate all over the world, so I want to make sure that if I say something, I explain it. I just attached it to that plastic board, and now I'm going to push it down on there. Okay, so that takes care of that part of the shaking so that my project stays in place. Then what I was thinking about doing is using things like these. Um, this is Ken Oliver's liquid metals in yellow gold and metallic amethyst. And I thought this would be something that we could use for this technique. So I'm going to give this a whirl. And basically what I'm going to do is try and do some smushing and I've done this one other time and it and the project came out pretty cool but I want to see if we can do it again and see if when I do it if I can do it without with with kind of shaking but getting uh, getting good results now I'm gonna cut about um, let's say a two inch by two inch piece of acetate so here are my two pieces of plastic and I'm going to use this cream colored cardstock so that you can see what I'm doing with my um, with my yellow my yellow gold and my purple what I'm going to do is you want to shake these up and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on my plastic and I'm going to kind of make a little swirly dollop about that much. We're going to just experiment first. And the, what I'm going to do is make sure that I tilt it so that it's not, um, so I don't have a big dollop of it anywhere. You know what I mean? I'm moving it around so that when I push this onto my paper, I'm not going to have a big blob anywhere. At least that's what I'm trying to do. It doesn't want to play with me though. It's about the size of one of my flowers, so I'm just going to put that in, in place like that and push it down and then pick it up. And even though I didn't want that dollopy thing, I got it anyway. And then you can just kind of move it around in there like with your, with your plastic. So this is if you, if you are shaking, that will, it, it, it works into the, into the whole program like that. I'm going to use my other f hand and just play with it with my finger. Maybe I'll want to play with my finger instead of... Ooh, I might do that instead. Let's try that. I put, I put too many drops on there. I'm sure you can see that. And I'm just going to 
drop it onto my flower and see if that works. If you don't like inky hands, obviously this is not going to be something you're going to want to play with, but I, I promised one of my viewers that I would give this a whirl and see if I could come up, ooh, oh boy, oh boy, if I could come up with something that would work if you have shaky hands. And um, I guess I'm thinking that if you put this in the center of the flower and move and your hand shook, you should still be able to get a good impression. I'm just playing with them with my finger. Clearly I don't have the world's greatest name anyway, so um, hopefully this is something that we all can do. It's back to when we were kids and we finger painted. And if you got a, a if you got um, a stamp that was that had a big floral pattern in it, it you could do this really easily, and you could um, you know play with it. I like it much better with my finger than I do with the the um, acetate. And I'm moving my finger around like it's shaky. I hope you could see that because I wanted to see if if uh, if my hand was shaking. Like let's say my hand is shaking like that much. I can still hit it. I mean I don't know. I, I'm sorry that, that I can't give you give you a better technique. I really want to give you some kind of an idea of something that would work well, but this is the best I could come up with. The smushing was fine, but I think the finger is better. I'm quite the finger painter, aren't I? Well, let's just say it's one of my huge skill sets. of the purple with a drop of the orange and see what that does. Like I said, since I don't know the color chart, I don't know what this is going to make. So if, if all of you out there who do know the color chart are gasping, going, don't do it, Sandy. I'm doing it. I'm living on the edge. And then I'm just going to take uh, one of my brushes. I'm just going to smear that around. Ooh. That is a little bit frisky. I don't want to waste this, so I'm going to put it somewhere. I guess I'll play right in here with it and see what that does. It's not bad. I maybe need one more drop of purple in it, though. It's a little bit too orange, I think. Like I said, I don't know the color families or the color wheel type things, so if I'm really screwing this up, somebody out there should be going, Oh, no, Sandy, don't do it. thing I couldn't do with my finger painting technique is the green so I'm just going to use one of my touch five markers this is number 43 and I'm just going to just lightly do the stems if I can I'm not crazy about that color green I'm going to see if I can use a spectrum noir DG3. See if it looks exactly the same. Kind of does. I might round my corners. I haven't decided that, but I think I am going to trim off a little bit of it because my card base is a little bit smaller. I bought another corner rounder and let's see it's hard to do when you have 110 pound cardstock let me just tell you it doesn't want to play that game that's the name of it Katomoro 
I'm making that up pro. I got it from um, Amazon. wasn't very expensive. I got it because one of my viewers told me I should try it and they said they thought I would like it better than my my blue um, creative memories and if you don't like the looks of it you can always take a nail file and you just go around it like that and that will clean off the problems that you have with it. I'm going to do this top too just in case you don't like the looks of it. There. That's better. Now I'm happier. There's that. I'm going to put it up on foam because I like it to be raised when we're doing something this big. I'm sure you've seen me do this, but I like to trim my foam. This is just kids fun foam. I offset it on the bottom and on one side so that when I, I'll show you that, I'll flip it over. <clears throat> if you flip it over you can see, I didn't do enough of it on the bottom, you can see that it, when you um, move it over then it should be small enough to be hidden. I'll just need to trim up down the top a little bit. Alright, we're going to get our ATG gun. And I had a, a lady tell me that she really loved her ATG and she felt bad that I didn't like mine. And if I was right-handed, I think I would really like this. But because I'm left-handed, I can't see where the tape is going on it. Okay, we're going to put that. I got a little glue sticking up. Put that down. big wooden stamp and lay on it for a second. That will help it to stay because um, I'm using Tombow um, mono liquid glue. This works really well but it, it needs a, a, a second to set up. So when I do that with, the, with that stamp it's really heavy because of the wood. It makes sure that it um, it makes sure that it stays in place. Okay, so I have my ribbon and I'm going to use this sheer gold ribbon and it has some problems with some wrinkles in it so I'm just wetting it and I'm going to run it like that up through my hand. And take this and I think I'm going to run this, should I run it through the top section, the middle, I think I'm going to go with the middle. You see how this is not sticking? That's because it only has tape runner on it. But that's beautiful because, as you know, it didn't matter because I was going to, I have to take it off anyway. Alright, so I'm just going to hopefully put that right in the center. Some wet glue on my foam. And then we'll, um, set it down again on that block. Well, we'll set this down and then we'll put the block on it. Like that. That looks pretty good. And then put this on it. Stay there, buddy. I'm not sure. I'm going to put some fun foam, no, some foam tape behind this and attach it to my ribbon. So in the meantime, when we're waiting for our card to set up being glued down, get these going. And I probably I'm going to put a little piece of, well, a little gum, glue gumdrop. I'm going to put a gumdrop on there, in case you wondered. Glue drop, glue, oh, shoot, I'm going to put a little glue dot on there to hold it under the ribbon. So we'll get a, our glue dot. Let me put that there. I'm going to just take a little bit of a glue dot, put it under my ribbon. Hopefully, if I can get it to lay there. 
and I'll get another one. This does not want to come off. Okay. And then, should I put that to the side? I think I will. You are amazingly amazing. And then I'm going to put this on it again. Still leave it there while I do my stamping. I'm going to stamp that open chamomile on the back of our envelope. This is an envelope I made when I had um, extra paper that I need to play get rid of, and so I made some envelopes with it. So here's our card and our envelope. I hope you enjoyed this, that you'll give it a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button at the bottom right of the video if you haven't already. And please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.